Hey what's going on guys it's Bagas here and today we're gonna be reviewing a nicer documentary that has garnered very mixed opinions, Dinosaur Revolution. And in this review we're gonna see how I feel about it. Dinosaur Revolution is a 4 episode series with each episode either depicting several different short stories set in the Mesozoic or one full consistent story. Like a lot of dinosaur documentaries, it also has scenes of paleontologists talking to the camera and also showing some of the discoveries of the dinosaurs. Evolution's Winners focuses on a bunch of different time periods within the Mesozoic. We see Eoraptors trying to survive in the Triassic landscape, a Gigantoraptor mating ritual, a battle between two male Cryolophosaurus, a Mosasaurus giving birth and defending her offspring from sharks, and finally, a hunt between the male Cryolophosaurus and a Platysaurus that ends up with both dinosaurs being chased by killer mosquitoes. I do like how despite the episode showing many different time periods and animals, all of them center around the theme of mating or parenthood, and it helps connect each part. Also, one thing I found hilarious was that in the Triassic segment, a Saurosuchus was about to eat a baby Eoraptor, and suddenly these three Dynectodons just come out of nowhere and start beating up on the Saurosuchus for seemingly no reason, and I don't know, I just found it hilarious. Also, actually, speaking of Eoraptor, I do like the symbiotic relationship between it and the Dynectodon. Episode 2, The Watering Hole, focuses on a story of several dinosaurs living around a watering hole. The episode starts with the comedic scene of a mother Allosaurus trying to get a good night's sleep while an Ornitholesi shouts in the background, then she goes to kill it, only for another one to start making noise. The actual story starts with a young Allosaurus fighting a young Denerosaurus that ends with the tail of the Denerosaurus breaking the Allosaurus' jaw. We then get a time skip and see another battle between the two rivals. Then a Taurosaurus enters the picture and disrupts the balance of power of the warring hole until it is defeated by the combined efforts of all the warring hole's inhabitants. I do like the ending of the two rivals reconciling to take down a common foe. The episode also adds on a brief scene of scientists testing the whip tail in action at the end. I enjoyed this episode far more than the first one, probably because it focused on a consistent story, and it does have deeper themes and symbolisms within it. The third episode, Survival Tactics, once again shows multiple different time periods. These include two gangs of Utah raptors fighting over a baby cyberosaurus they want to kill, a small bird-like dinosaur called Raiho Novus, I'm pretty sure I pronounced that wrong, that can imitate the sounds of other animals, escaping baby Jungosaurus and giant beast buffalo frogs. I'm pretty sure I also pronounced that wrong. Ishinosaurus eating a magical mushroom is also included here that it also gets hunted by two cyan raptors. Jurassic mammals escaping from two guanlongs, and a baby anhanguera learning to fly. But the highlight for me was the story of an old and young proboscertops being traveling buddies until they find a new herd for the young one, encountering velociraptors along the way. It ends with the old male heading to a proboscertops gravesite to rest. The themes and symbolisms within this short story are surprisingly deep, and the fact that there's no narration makes it even better and showcases the documentary's capability of world of storytelling. The fourth and final episode, Endgame, starts with a shot of the approaching asteroid and a time frame before depicting a battle between two male T-Rex. This opening immediately introduces the characters, the setting, and the upcoming future events set to end the Cretaceous. We then skip to the one-armed Rex and his mate alongside their two babies, which then became snacks for the rival. After another skip, the pair goes hunting and have a final encounter with the rival Rex, and I like how the fight is an almost exact mirror of the first fight with the only difference being the female Rex, as the combined efforts of the pair impale the rival male on a triceratops horn. The rest of the episode centers around the pair trying to protect and raise another hatchling up until the KT event. We then get to see the aftermath of the impact and the narrative shifts from T-Rex to Troodon. It's honestly quite sad to see the Parachodon just trying to survive in the bleak winter aftermath, and knowing that there is no hope for them just makes it have that much more weight to it. The series, however, ends by telling us that dinosaurs still exist today in the form of birds. Gotta say, I was not expecting this level of storytelling from the finale. I like the rivalry story between the two Rexes, and surprisingly, the rest of the episodes after the battle doesn't have a focus on violence, which I enjoyed a lot. Also, this is the most detailed view we've had so far of the aftermath of the asteroid impact, 
and I think it was delivered very well, and honestly, it was probably the best possible ending for the series. Going into this, I did not expect to like it at all. From the reviews and stuff I saw online, I was preparing for failure. But after watching it, I actually liked it quite a bit. For one, the most obvious thing is the designs. They're spectacular. The designs are eye-catching and have a lot of the dinosaurs show you know, bird-like features, which you know I think is what the show was trying to lean into, and they succeeded at that. Some dinosaurs even have specific features from specific bird species, which I also thought was a nice easter egg. I know I said in my Planet Dinosaur review that that show was the best looking dinosaur documentary, but I gotta say, Dinosaur Revolution is a close contender for that title. Another thing that I enjoyed a lot, in fact probably the thing I enjoyed the most about the show, is the storytelling. It excels in the storytelling department with the episodes that focus on multiple time periods, doing a great job at making simple stories that fit within the small runtime of each part, with some of them having deep themes and symbolisms within them, particularly in the Protoceratops segment. As for the episodes that focus on the consistent story, they made the most of that longer runtime to create a good story that, once again, has deep themes and symbolisms within it that is also just entertaining to watch. This is probably the most fun I've had watching a story within a dinosaur documentary in quite a while. Something else that caught me off guard was how often the narration would take a break. Some entire segments didn't have any narration and quite honestly, I agree with that decision because for one, it allows the visuals to speak for themselves and also shows the series' capability for worthless storytelling. But also, it makes it more enjoyable without the constant buzzing from the narrator. Also, after watching two creature violence centered documentaries back to back, it was honestly really refreshing to see a more calm and peaceful dinosaur documentary. There are definitely quite a lot of parts that do focus on creature violence, and actually, I will say the show can be needlessly over violent at times. But those parts for me are overshadowed by the surprisingly calm nature of a lot of the documentary. However, there are some points that I have to agree with the critics on. The most obvious and the most well-known thing is the dinosaur's behavior. The dinosaurs in this show can sometimes act like humans with reactions and expressions that are human-like. And some of the scenes can be too cartoonish and the situations the dinosaurs find themselves in can also be a bit unbelievable and also cartoonish. To be honest, before even watching it, I knew that this was gonna be the one thing I was gonna criticize because it is valid and even I noticed it quite a lot. And yeah, it is kinda jarring seeing this supposedly science-driven documentary having goofy scenes of the dinosaurs that also act human-like. So on that point, I do stand that that is one of the most major flaws of the series and I understand why people dislike it for that reason. I also agree that the show is over edited. The episodes can have these very dramatic transitions between parts and it's again unnecessary and I don't like the choice to have the paleontologists having this blue holographic filter and dissolving in and out of their scenes. It just distracts from what they're actually saying. The show also tries way too hard to be comedic and at times it works but other times it just doesn't and it just makes certain parts kind of cringy to watch and take seriously. Now all the critiques that I mentioned are present within the series and I can see why people who expected a science driven documentary were disappointed and angered by the cartoony nature of some of the scenes and how some of the scenes aren't realistic or make any sense and all of those things are you know, things that drag the show down a bit for me, and if they were improved, the show would be way better. But despite that, I do think that the amazing storytelling and the great visual design of the dinosaurs do outweigh those flaws. And I do think that there's an example of how the negativity of a show, or any piece of media for that matter, can outshine and sometimes dismiss the positives. Because as we see human nature, we like to talk about the negatives of something more than the positives and therefore can forget or choose to ignore the greatness of something. Now again, I'm not saying that the critics are wrong, in fact they're actually quite right. What I'm saying is that there's another side of it that some people choose not to talk about and that we should always look at something from two different perspectives. And hey, if my argument didn't convince you to give Dinosaur Revolution a shot or this documentary just didn't do it for you even after looking at it from a new perspective, 
there are plenty of others that you can choose to watch instead. Alright, um, time to put on a tier list. Quality wise, I give it a surprisingly high 4.5. The show just has very amazing storytelling. Like, the stories are very interesting and have a lot of deep themes and symbolisms within them. And also, like, just from a visual, like, perspective, the dinosaurs look really, really good. The designs are probably some of the best I've seen in any dinosaur documentary. Now, there are, of course, Critiques, you know, this one is infamous for it. Dinosaurs can act a bit too human-like, so, you know, kind of, you know, it makes it seem like it's not to be taken seriously, and also that isn't helped by the fact that some of the situations that dinosaurs get, in get themselves into can be a bit cartoony and unbelievable. Like, one example I can think of off the top of my head is the two grand longs, like, not knowing they're standing on top of a Mentosaurus. So, yeah, that situation is kind of dumb. But I, I think, you know, those critiques are you can kind of like you know dismiss them not not dismiss them you can kind of overlook them a bit because of just how great like the storytelling is and how great the dinosaurs look at the same wise i give it a 4.5 the stories are really really entertaining and they're actually very easy to get invested to and you know there, i don't think there was a single point within the documentary where i was truly bored you know i never felt like i was bored now Admittedly, some of the goofy scenes can be a bit cringy to watch, but that's like a personal preference and you know, it's probably one or two. But the rest of the documentary is entertaining. Rewatchability was, I give it a 4.4. It is for 45 minute long episodes, so that is quite a lot of time. I think it's about the same as Planet Di and as Dinosaur Planet, I'm pretty sure. But I think it's entertaining to rewatch, you know, just revisiting this these great stories and looking at these amazing dinosaur designs i think it's worth rewatching if you want to and as for my opinion i give it a 4.4 i'm surprisingly like it i surprisingly like it i was not expecting to like it as much as i do and you know i do think on some areas it can be improved which is why it's not higher but i gotta say i was pleasantly surprised that I liked it as much as I did, and the show was as good as it is. And that brings us up to a total score of 17.8, putting it in the 8th tier, actually given the same score as one with dinosaurs, but since I like this one more, it's going on top. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, if you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And to be completely transparent, I was fully expecting to do another rant review thing, like Monsters Resurrected review. Like, I was fully not expecting to like Dinosaur Revolution at all, because I had, like, this preconceived, preconceived notion that it was going to be bad. But I was pleasantly surprised that, you know, I was wrong, and it was actually pretty good, which I'm glad, because I didn't want to do another one. And uh, before I end the video, I'm going to give you a quick behind-the-scenes fact thing. Um, I messed up the final line of the, not the final line, I guess, like, the final part of the conclusion segment like three or four times so I'm a bit out of breath because it just took I just messed up so many times and I kind of like wrote it all in one long sentence so I didn't have any full stops so I kind of didn't know when, when I messed up I didn't know when to start again because I didn't have like actual short sentences but anyways yeah so ended up being an eight minute um, recording so that should be fun to edit but um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.